Welcome to Chatting with Camille, helping you share the gospel of Jesus Christ at church, home, and beyond. Welcome! Today we're going to do something a little bit different because guess what? General Conference is coming up awesome. Definitely some of my favorite times of the year, but I know it's not for everybody. Let's go over four ways that we can engage our teens and tweens with General Conference so it can be something that they look forward to as well. Idea number one. I have about three large printables for you to use in the fall General Conference weekends. Number one, the Old Testament coloring page. Great for all year, but great for conference weekend too. It's a giant page, shows lots of different stories from the Old Testament that you can color all weekend long and probably not even finish. We still have ours up from the last general conference. As people come to our house, we invite them to go and color it and add to it. It's been really fun for us to do and to see those stories as we read throughout the year. The great thing about this one is after you get that first download, I'll send you a second download where it has additional activities that you can do with that coloring page beyond just the obvious coloring, including ways that you can use it for general conference weekend. Be sure you print off both of those things. Number two, I have the House of Apostles. I call it my House of Light because in a scary world, as you might say, we need to fill our homes with light. And so out of each window or a door, there is an apostle peeking out. They have their names written on there. You can print that large size or you can tape four pieces of paper together and print it at home. Super fun as well. I have some more ideas for you when you download that as well. Printable number three is brand new. I just finished it and uploaded it. It is conference games. Lots of fun games that you can play. It's meant to be printed large and it's meant for teens and tweens. It's going to be too hard for junior primary. There's the maze and the graphene and the Sudoku and like a boggle word search. So the words don't go in a straight line. They kind of twist and turn and general conference mash plus other things. Super fun. Again, you can print those off at home, but really they're best giant because it's kind of an unexpected size, which makes it more fun for everybody anyway. But just because of what's on it, it's easier to do when they're a large size. Go Go ahead and send it to a copy center. You can price a couple of different ones in your area to see which one will be the cheapest or meet your needs. Some even deliver. I use the engineering or the blueprint option. It's a document printing. It's cheaper that way with black and white, but also it's a good coloring material, so it works really well. That's what I recommend there. It's a great thing to add to your weekend. I tape ours up on the wall. It's out of the way there, but it's easy to see. People can go over to it. And that's one of the things with general conference. Sometimes you need little breaks. <laughs> it's a whole lot of watching and sitting still for a long time. And sometimes we just need to stand up and move and do something a little bit different before we go crazy, right? Or before we fall asleep. When I put these up, they have to go and walk to them. So that gets them moving a little bit. And then it's a little bit of a change of pace. They can do it and then they can come sit down. There are definitely things that you could do while being quiet so that it's enjoyable. The only one that I would kind of caution you on is the general conference mash game. You might want to save that one for in between sessions because that one can get rowdy, but it's fun. <laughs> Number two is bingo, or as the church calls it, conference squares. I printed out my bingo cards from the churchjesuschrist.org. They have great ones there. No need to search around for anything else. Our graphics are the older version because I printed these ones out years ago. They have the same words today, just updated graphics. I recommend laminating them and then you can use them for years. We like to use cereal for the markers or goldfish, something that they're going to snack on anyway. And then they can eat their markers when they're done. When they get a bingo, I'll give them a small prize, like a piece of gum because we don't normally have gum around. So that's a fun prize. But they can also go for blackout and I'll give them a bigger reward, like a thing of Pringles or something. Again, something that they're probably going to snack on anyway, but this way they have to earn it. They're welcome to use two boards if they want to. I just print out all the cards and they trade and they have fun together. The goal of bingo though is it helps them focus and be quiet. They're not allowed to share with each other. If you heard prayer, the person next to you can't ask if you heard prayer. They need to hear it for themselves. Otherwise, they're not going to get the reward. Obviously, if they're struggling, then I let them help each other out. But the point is for them to figure it out on their own and to focus. It's been super fun. I tried to go without it one year. It got in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> 
So we still play it and we start our dental conference with them in the very first session. It's a great little habit and a great way to start things off. Now idea number three is again, using the food that you're already gonna eat probably that weekend, but in a way that makes it a more of an activity. So like you could do snack necklaces where they have to string the food on the necklace first, then they show it off and then they eat it. But our favorite food activity is general conference houses, like a gingerbread house for Christmas time, but general conference version. It doesn't have to be like the conference center or anything like that, but it does have to relate to general conference. I love this because then I can see what they're actually paying attention to, what they're picking up on. We build it one session and use whatever's around the house. Do not go crazy. Save that for Christmas. <laughs> use up what you have around your house, like the bottom of a cereal box, you know, whatever you have, and then just buy a couple bags of dollar candy. You don't need to go crazy. They build it first, then they have to come and explain it to me how their thing relates to general conference. Now, if they're just gonna sit, dump a whole bunch of candy with fries, frosting on a plate and say, look, it's the people in the conference center. I'm sorry, but that doesn't count. <laughs> They have to get it approved in order to eat it. So it's a fun activity. You can see what they're paying attention to and it takes a while. Usually we'll do it Sunday morning. They'll build during the break. They can explain and we can take pictures because it's fun to see how they've grown up through the years. And then in the afternoon session, they can eat it. I like to save it for the very last session because if there is candy on it, obviously I don't want that to then cause them to fall asleep right away or get crazy for the rest of conference. Totally recommend it. Idea number four, grab my general conference notebooks. They are fun because they're more than just a notebook. Now, everybody's different. One person might only want to get one page, write down the inspiration they get or the name of the person who gave their favorite talk and that's all they're gonna write. And that's okay because if that's the way they learn, we want to celebrate that. But there's other people who are gonna want the entire notebook and it's gonna help them engage with general conference because this has activity pages in it, it has coloring pages in it, it has ideas of how to use the blink pages, etc. There's more ways to take notes than one and that's gonna show them how. Plus there's review activities and preparation activities. We don't want them to just listen to General Conference Weekend. We want them to get something out of it. So they're gonna have to prepare for it. They're gonna have to listen to it, pay attention during it, and then review it. I love to do some of the review activities together, like what themes stood out to you? This is my favorite question because it's different for everybody because General Conference Weekend is a weekend of inspiration personal revelation, right? And so the theme that stuck out to me is not the same theme that stuck out to my kid. And I love to hear what they actually pick out of general conference for themselves. It is a beautiful thing and it's a fun way to make new connections because as they say their theme, I'm like, oh yeah, I did notice that, but I didn't notice it as much as them. And now I'm gonna go back through and read next time with that in mind so that I can connect better with that kid. There's other review activities in these books. Obviously, I recommend them. Go and grab them. Help your kids understand why we take notes, the things that we actually want to write down during general conference, and why you like to take notes yourself. Teach them what it is to have a general conference notebook that's worthwhile. These are excellent journals, spiritual journals. You can bind them and keep them forever. All right, guys. Chat with you later. Come discover more gospel fun at cknscratch.com. Thank you.